I'm Alyssa and today I wanted to talk about my Asperger's and I know you're laughing at the name now because it sounds really really stupid and funny and puerile so laugh, get it out of your system. But most people don't know I have this. I've mentioned it a couple of times in live streams but overall I don't really mention the fact that I have Asperger's. And if you don't know what Asperger's is, it's a neurological disorder that falls on the autism spectrum and it's typically a milder form of autism. And the case with me was I didn't find out that I had Asperger's until last year when I was 24, almost 25. So that is a very late diagnosis for anyone, especially a woman. And Asperger's with women, or, or autism with women in general, is harder to detect than it is with men. Now, I don't know if that's because men are more susceptible to it, or because women naturally tend to hold in their feelings and emotions more, and it just goes undetected. But for so long, I had been misdiagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, which I do have anxiety, but that ties in with my Asperger's. But I knew, ever since I was a little kid, that something wasn't quite, you know, right. It's not like there's something wrong with me or anything, but I knew something was different for me than the other kids that I grew up with. I started reading at about the age of three, and by the age of five, I was reading books that were hundreds of pages long, such as Jane Eyre and Green Gables. I was reading the Harry Potter books by then, and that is called hyperlexia, and that is common with Asperger's. But, you know, at the time, people thought I was just a smart kid. Also, it's always been very hard for me to make eye contact unless I am talking to a camera. Even to this day, it's very hard. I have to tell myself, look them in the eye, or I'll just glance over to the side, which most people might see that as being rude or dismissive. And if I ever do that with you in person, if you ever meet me in person or anyone that I've known and I've done that to, I'm very sorry. I'm not conscious of that fact. It's just looking into someone's eyes is very personal and it's just not something that comes naturally to me. Another aspect of Asperger's that I've had since I was a little kid and still continues to this day is I'm not crazy about being touched. There are obvious exceptions to this like my boyfriend, close family members, etc. But touching, especially light touching, like if someone just brushes my shoulder or arm, they just tap me on the shoulder, that just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I've become Cusco from the Emperor's New Groove. No touchy! And it just makes me uncomfortable. And I don't reach out and touch people either unless, again, close family members, boyfriend, etc. Which most people just saw that as I wasn't very affectionate. Also, I have really terrible handwriting, which is another sign of Asperger's. If you've ever seen my handwriting, you know it's terrible. It's chicken scratch. I can't hold a pen right or a pencil right, and I don't have the patience to actually, you know, try to make my writing look nice. And a couple of other things that started in childhood and one stayed pretty much in childhood, one has expanded over into my adulthood. But in childhood, when someone would tell me a story about something happening to someone, I would repeat what they said to me, and then I would ask them to repeat the story again so I could hear it again, and then I would repeat what they said. And you get the drift, that is called echolalia, which is another early sign of Asperger's. And also, if I am in a place where there are a lot of people, there's a lot of noise going on, I don't really know anyone there, even if I know one or two people there, if I don't know the majority of people and we're all crammed together, or even if it's a bigger place but there's a lot of people, a lot of noise, a lot of stimulation going on, I just have a total meltdown. My brain shuts down. It's like a computer shutting down all of a sudden. It's just mental overload. I cannot do parties. I can't go to nightclubs or anything like that. Sometimes even Walmart stresses me out and causes me to be on edge and anxious. And that still affects me today. Now getting on to the more personal experience side of my life with Asperger's, it's going to get a little bit darker and I'm not going to go too dark, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but one aspect of Asperger's that I've had for as long as I can remember has been stimming, which is where I need to fidget with something, I need to move my hands, and if I don't have anything to do, I don't have a way to move my hands, I start picking or scratching at my skin. When I started college and became super duper stressed, that turned into self-harm. And to this day, I still will pick and scratch on my skin until it bleeds. It's a very bad habit when I'm trying to stop, but it's just something that I do subconsciously. I don't realize I'm doing it unless someone sees me doing it and they freak out. And I feel really bad about that. Something else that has affected me greatly has been the fact that I have not been able to hold a job down. I have had 
so many jobs that I've had to quit because every time I have a job, I feel oppressed. I feel like I can't escape. Just the fact that I have to be there for a certain amount of time. There's so much expectation put on me. There's so many people around me. I have to look people in the eye, which is not something that comes naturally to me. It causes me to have panic attacks and they are severe, which means I would always have to go to the bathroom during work and I would cry. I couldn't breathe. I would start to hyperventilate. My whole body would go numb and tingle. And I just, after a few times of that, I couldn't handle the job. I would cry during work at the cash register or when I was stalking or whatever I was doing. I would just start bawling and I'd have to quit. And of course that caused obvious issues with different people and with my life in general. And I didn't understand why I couldn't hold a job down. I didn't understand why all this was so overwhelming to me. And there are some memories that I don't like to relive that, you know, go with that section of my life. I'm sorry for getting emotional. I've also found that it's really hard for me to open up to people and I wish it was easier for me to because there are certain people I really want to be open with. But it doesn't come naturally to me to just admit how I'm feeling. I have to be asked and even then it's really hard because I want to say what I'm feeling but it feels like there's a vice around my throat and just won't let the words come out. And it's hard. It's really hard. And I misinterpret things because for a lot of people with Asperger's it's hard to decipher people's emotions and I've learned some things from watching movies and stuff because I've learned certain body language signals I've learned certain expressions that indicate anger or happiness or sadness but if people aren't feeling an extreme emotion if they're just if they're kind of hiding it if they are expecting me to know what they feel I can't tell and I need them to tell me how they're feeling. And sometimes I misconstrue emotions. I might think someone's angry at me and it'll upset me and cause me to have a meltdown when they're really not angry at me. And it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And it's making me cry thinking about it. <laughs> also, with Asperger's, people with Asperger's tend to have an interest in one thing or one field. For me, that is entertainment. I've always been obsessed with movies, video games, music, TV shows, and books, and that's all I've been interested in my entire life. And I never understood why that was the only thing I was interested in. I didn't think it was weird, but, you know, I saw my friends being interested in so many different things, and I was just interested in this one area or this one industry. And I've absorbed so much knowledge about all these different things, and I have a really good memory. I can remember directors, I can remember who's in a movie, I can remember movie titles, I can remember that a movie is a remake or something, I can remember video game developers, I can remember their gameography, I can remember filmographies of directors, it's just I can remember all of this, but other things that most people would consider normal and simple are very complicated and obtuse for me. And on the flip side, things that are complicated um, to use for other people are clear as day for me. They make total sense to me. And I view the world in a different way. It's really hard to describe how I view the world in a different way, but I can tell because most people I meet, they see the world in this way, but I'm seeing it in this way. And it can be hard for me to connect with people sometimes because of that, because I don't know how they're feeling. I don't know if they're going to think of me differently if I say how I'm feeling or how I see something or how I take something. It's difficult and I know this video has been really scattershot. I'm just kind of word vomiting. I hate even saying the word vomit by the way. But I wanted to kind of let people in and let people know some signs of Asperger's, what it's been like for me personally and it's hard. It's really really hard because you know I want to be able to express my feelings I want to be able to read people and not misconstrue what they're feeling or saying and obviously you know I kind of wish I hadn't gone through those periods where I was self-harming and having suicidal thoughts and, and you know I go back and think about all the jobs I had to quit and how I dropped out of college and how much of a disappointment that must have been to my friends and family and yeah, I can't help it, but it still makes me feel guilty about that fact. It's something that I felt guilty about for a really long time now. But you know what? That's me. That's my brain. And there are so many more aspects I didn't even cover in this video because, like I said, I didn't really outline this video. I didn't write a script or anything. I was just wanting to kind of just get it out, get what my thoughts were out into a video. I didn't intend to get emotional, by the way. But you know what? I don't think I would change anything about me because if I didn't have Asperger's, 
I wouldn't have this YouTube channel, I don't think. I wouldn't have started my website. I wouldn't have met the people I've met. I wouldn't have the boyfriend I have. And I'm very lucky that I do have a very supportive family and have some supportive friends. And you guys are very loyal and supportive. And I'm just so grateful to the therapist and the psychiatrist who fought for me to get tested for Asperger's because before that, every doctor and psychiatrist I'd had before never even brought it up. They never noticed the signs, but these two women were so amazing and they fought for me and even though the testing was super expensive and it took forever and it was nerve-wracking and it was multi-stepped, it was such a relief to get that official diagnosis that I have Asperger's. I've had it since I was a kid. Ever since I was a baby. Like, another little thing real quick about Asperger's is a lot of times kids with Asperger's when they're babies they don't crawl they just start walking which I went from kind of rolling around on the floor I never crawled though to walking I had so many signs as a child that went unnoticed that teachers didn't notice my family they didn't know about Asperger's they just knew that you know I was quirky it's not their fault but so many people didn't notice it and do I wish I had been diagnosed earlier? Yeah, it would have been a lot easier. But you know what? The things that happened to me happened for a reason. They made me stronger. They led me to where I am now, which I'm really happy where I am now, even though I'm crying. You know, I'm very, very blessed. And, you know, I know there are going to be difficult days. I know that I will never be cured of this. But like I said before, I don't think I would want to be. Because... Even though, you know, some days are hellish, some days I have panic attacks, sometimes my brain just overloads. I like me, and I like my talents and my interests and my personality, and, you know, it also has really helped weed out people that I don't need in my life and people who truly love me and who, you know, even if they don't fully understand what's going on, they still stand by me and support me and they try their best to be there for me and... That means more to me than you'll ever know, and I'm sorry that I don't say it enough. So if you're watching this and you're one of those people, thank you for being by me. I know I'm not the best at expressing emotions, but I love you so much. And to all of you who have watched this, I hope it's been a little informative. If not, I'm sorry if it was skyrocket. Again, I'm sorry, but I kind of just wanted to get it off my chest, kind of explain some signs and some personal experiences without getting too personal. If you have any specific questions, ask me down below, but please, you know, if you're rude, I'm going to delete and block, obviously. This is a serious video, and I just really want to spread the word about Asperger's. I'm not going to go into my usual spiel because it doesn't feel appropriate, but I just want to say thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much, and thank you for sticking by me. If you decide to leave, I understand because, I mean, you know, I got really personal in this video, but if you decide to stay or if you decide to subscribe, that means the world to me. And I'm going to try to make more videos soon. So thank you so much for just being by my side throughout all of this. It's been a tough ride and it's been a shock to the system, but it's been important and it's been life changing both positively and negatively. But it's something that it's mine, it's my battle, and I'm gonna fight it for the rest of my life, and I'm not gonna give up. So, there you go.